Hi, we are uh, here today at the Wise Inn in uh, Wise, Virginia. This is um, August of uh, 2019, and we're here to tape an oral history interview with Chief Lee Vest of the Remnant Uchi Nation. The Remnant Uchi Nation is uh, based in Kingsport, Tennessee, and it's uh, neither a state nor a federally recognized American Indian tribe. The Yuchi people are utterly distinguished by the Yuchi language that they have spoken for many years. Theirs is an isolate language spoken by no other American Indian people and linguists estimate that the last time that the Yuchi shared any language with another tribe was at least 6,000 years ago. Lacking written history, we can only speculate about the Yuchi based on their archaeological record before the European, Europeans arrived in America and began to make a written record. My speculation is that a thousand years ago, the Yuchi people were at the Great Cahokia Mound Center on the Mississippi River where the modern states of Illinois and Missouri are located. And from there, at Cahokia, the Yuchi people spread eastward across Tennessee during what is the European medieval period. And they reached East Tennessee by perhaps the 14th or the 15th century. Spanish records, written dating from the 16th century, securely placed the Yuchi in eastern Tennessee and southwestern Virginia and northwestern North Carolina. Specifically, those Spanish records come from the 1567 Juan Pardo expedition, which came into this region where we are in Wise County 40 years before the English settled at Jamestown. A hundred years later, under the baleful influence of the colonial English speakers, speaking colonists, the Yuchi had become Indian slave traders. And in 1715, they lost out in the battle for Indian slave trading and suffered a great diaspora all across the southeast, leaving behind remnant Yuchi groups of people in many places throughout the southeast, as far as Georgia and Florida. In the 19th century, most of the Yuchi people were sent to Oklahoma on the so-called Trail of Tears, and the largest single Yuchi population today lives in the vicinity of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they are subjects of the Creek Indian Nation. They've never achieved independence. Today, we are going to learn about the personal history of Chief Lee and about the remnant Indian people of Kingsport, remnant Yuchi Indian people of Kingsport. My colleague in asking the questions today is Ms. Mika Endo. Mika is a native of Japan who has studied history in America for over six years. At the present time, she is a teacher of history at George Mason University in Fairfax County and, as a graduate, and works also as a graduate teaching assistant and she is completing her final work on her PhD dissertation. Her PhD dissertation deals with the 1924 Virginia Racial Integrity Act, which you're going to hear a lot about today, that required all babies, the act required all babies born in Virginia to be registered either as a member of the black or the white race, and thereby administratively eradicated Virginia Indians. The act was not repealed until 1998. Mika, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you please add some introduction and begin with the first question for Chief Lee. Jim, thank you for the introduction. Mm -hmm. So I would like to go on and start my question. So the first question to you, Chief Lee, mm -hmm. is about the Yuchi tradition um, during the 16th century Spanish invasion. So tell us about the oral history of the DeSoto expedition that you have often spoke to Jim. Okay. Well, first of all, we were in the area when the Spanish came through uh, what is called uh, uh, the, the area where the salt, it's salt wall. DeSoto came through, yes. Right. 
And matter of fact, I have some salt back there that that uh, we've made. If you want to see any of that, right on that right? okay. Uh, we lived there for some time, and uh, we made our living uh, uh, by making salt, and also by the, we had gardens, and we also hunted. Uh, it wasn't like a sport. Uh, the hunting was. Uh, we did hunting and gathering camps, which we we also do those hunting and gathering camps. Uh, for programs for people to see uh, how we actually lived during, during those years. And DeSoto? Well, DeSoto you know, came through and then he had a, uh, I've forgotten the name of the uh, soldier that married one of the Uchi girls and took her down to, to Florida. And matter of fact, when Cindy and I was coming back from Florida one day, we was thinking, okay, we're backtracking the soldier that married one of the Uchi women. Go back and tell them, tell them, speak about what you told me one time about uh, the oral history and the tradition of the Uchi tribe, about the DeSoto, the, the DeSoto expedition, and what they looked like when they arrived. Okay, yeah, that's how Jim and I first met. It's been several years ago. Uh, Jim and I have been around each other all these years, and then all of a sudden we've kind of come together as friends. Uh, the uh, one of the soldiers uh, married uh, one of our... our Louisa Mendez. Yes, yeah. Louisa Mendez. And uh, matter of fact, uh, the uh, state of Virginia has uh, had me come up to their uh, area. They have a, a bunch of riding trails through and wanted me to name all those trails. There's about 120 of them, 120 different trails. Wanted me to, in uh, Uchi language... In to Wise know, County. Right, to do, do that. All right, that, uh, Brittany is my daughter, so we went up up there, and uh, they put us in a four-wheeler and rode us all over the country up there. And as uh, I saw different different things uh, that was in, important to us to name trails, so we did that. And th then that information was going to some somebody in Richmond, Virginia, for them to to look over these these names. And it's very Yuchi language is very hard to, to understand, yeah. and uh, anyway, I, I don't know what what this, you know, if it's going to go through or not. But they also from from that place uh, where the, all these trails are, uh, and also there was a museum up there that they know for, it was a Yuchi museum. They want the name of the road from from uh, that particular part of the. Uh, Virginia, uh, all the way down to the to the, the uh, museum there in the, uh, I can't remember the name of that little town. So it's all the it's, uh, No, it's um, where the museum is. I th did you and, you and Mika go by there the other day? Yeah, Saltville. So, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. so they want to name a trail from from there to the. To that museum, okay. and uh, there's a, a a lot of history with that particular museum. I've been up there several times to do programs. Yeah, the the question I was trying to get you to answer was when you and I first met. I came as kind of an academic studying Uchi history, and you had a lot of oral tradition. And we talked about the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, this was ten or twelve years ago. We talked about the fact that um, the soda would come through, and you said there was an oral tradition. That the people who came through had how many legs? Oh, had six legs. And to explain that. Okay. To the people who. Uh, I didn't know what you was asking. Me. Well, uh, we had never seen horses before, and a lot of the Spanish people uh, were on horses, and of course the, the four legs of a horse and the two legs of the, the Spanish people. <laughs> uh, we thought that was a strange animal. There with six <laughs> legs. Yeah. And uh, they also had on. Uh, their armament, and they were real shiny. They they're all polished up, and and in the woods, when the the sun would stream through the, the trees and stuff like that, and hit that armor, and we were looking at it, it would blind us. And we thought they were, I don't know, I don't. This was before the time, but they wouldn't push a button to, to blind us. Right there, it was the sun <laughs> off of the thing, and then the uh, uh, this group of people. Uh, found out we had a lot of corn places and you know, we had stored corn 
and uh, I'm going to use the word borrow. They borrowed our corn. Once you borrow the corn and the horses eat it, so you don't want it anymore. But anyway, they uh, they fed their horses, and we didn't have much to eat that winter. And uh, of course, I wasn't I wasn't born then. But anyway, but uh, that's how Jim and I met. This was at Will Fields uh, Archaeological Society in, uh, in Abingdon, in Abingdon, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was when we realized that you and I had sort of come to the same conclusions. You had come to the conclusion through your oral history. And, I had done it by, by reading the academic reading, right. the academic literature. Yes, yeah. it was pretty much well. When when the Spanish uh, let's just talk about the salt bowl area. When the Spanish were there, in the Spanish archives, uh, I may skip out some of the stuff, but the Spanish archives talks about about us being there was only the only tribe in this area. There was no other tribe, but there was a Lenape tribe which was being. Due, due north from no, what is now Knoxville, Tennessee, but on the, the border of Kentucky. And that was uh, called the, the Lenape, L-E-N-A-P-E. And uh, since then I've met a lot of Lenape friends. Yes. Okay. And uh, anyway, they, uh, they were in the same boat kind of as we were. We were all trying to get uh, state recognition or federal recognition at that particular time. One reason we went to the recognition uh, for is, and I've got the papers here for you all. Uh, of our You're not right now. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to all of this later. Okay. I've got yeah. the, anyway. I've got both of you all a copy of, the, of that. And let me let me add um, for the record um, that the the Indian woman who married the soldier okay. mm -hmm. from that expedition, uh, we What's don't know what her Indian name was but uh, the Spanish quarter, Luisa Menendez, and the soldier that she married was Juan Ribas, and that's all documented in the historical record. And then later, she moves to St. Augustine in Florida with her husband, with Ribas, and some 30 or 40 years later, she's interviewed by the Spanish authorities about her background, and she uh, says in the interview that she came from a place where they made salt with certain methods using fire, and that's the method where you get the salt brine, which is available at Saltville, and boil it down over a wood fire right. to get to get the salt. Mm -hmm. And we, what we did uh, at one time, the, the salt boil area was under uh, seawater. Right. Uh, and the uh, there was a lot of, lot of caverns in that particular area. And that water had drained down into a rock, a rock cave, and that water is still there. But it's a, it's a brine water. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's still it's actually even today. Very it's, right. That, it's, that salt it's, right in those little boxes up yeah. there. That salt was made at our hunting and gathering camp about maybe two years ago. Okay. But Saltville is still making salt to right. eat, even today. Most of you go into mm -hmm. the animal feed business. Yeah. Okay. You you want to move on, uh, Mika? Yes. Okay, so my next question is to you is about the 1857 roll. So okay. first tell us what this 1857 roll is about and what is the importance and significance of the 1857 roll? Okay, this, I've got the, that roll here. They show it, seven show up. it. Do you want to wait till later to show No, it? no, show the roll right now, uh -huh. that's good. This is a very sacred piece to us and uh, I always put gloves on to handle that you know, because it's a very very fragile piece. And, and we should should preface this that just uh, 15 or 20 years earlier we had what is called the Trail of Tears when Andrew Jackson had forced the American Indian tribes of the southeast okay. to move to Oklahoma. And this role is made about 15 years after the Trail of Tears it demonstrates the fact that there were American Indians who remained in our region despite the fact that there had been a trail of tears. Right. Show the role. Well, this, of course, I, I made this cover to put on this to protect it. And it's got Choyaha, which is uh, the Yuchi. And this was uh, kept in custody by my granddaddy. And I have no idea what kind of uh, leather this is. Uh, 
I always thought it looked like an elephant or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, the, it's a, a, a leather bound book. Uh, it's got mother of pearl buttons on both sides of this thing to keep the pages intact. It's very, very fragile. Can you hold it up a little? Ah, yeah. Good. And there used to be a, some bead work right in here, and that, over the years, this was 1857, so between 1857 and, and whenever, uh, all this bead work vanished. And it's a very, it's, very fragile book. That's, could you say something about the inscription that you, on that page? Could you yeah, show that page and it's right here. hold it up and then just describe what it says? This right here is the first writing in there, and it says 18, March of 21st, 1857. Uh, it says, uh, I'll have to read this. I mean, I, I know it by heart, but I, I, I'd rather read this thing. On, uh, on this day, let me put some glasses on here. So, or Mika, can you read that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, it says, March 21st, 1857. On this day that Creator has brought seen fit that we come together as the Appalachian people. We come from many tribes. The Monacan Saponi? Saponi. 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 Yuchi Tuleo Tulelo? Tulelo. Tulelo. Cherokee, Shawnee. But now we gather as one. Mm -hmm. We ask Creator to protect and deliver us from the dark evil that tracks us. Okay, that dark evil that was tracking us was the government. It was Andrew oh, Jackson and that. At that particular time, because. Dark evil. Uh -huh. And while I'm on that, that particular thing about the government, uh, there was a guy named Walter Plecker who was the first uh, Bureau of Vital Statistics for the state of Virginia. And Let, Let's hold that and come. We've got lots of questions. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's Mika's area of yeah. research. What I wanted to point out here is that um, Andrew Jackson has forced the Indian removal. The Trail of Tears has happened. And now the remnant tribes come together and make a document which says we're still here in 1857 mm -hmm. and the lead tribe is the Yuchi and this role has been held by the remnant Yuchi people since 1857. Mm -hmm. Describe so, the rest of the role. I, I think it's uh, Floyd Vest at that time. He was named after Floyd County and John Floyd who I think was was, was a governor. Right. Uh, they saw at that time that by the en encroachment, I don't mean for this to be a hostile thing today, but we're, 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 we're very peaceful people and we're, we're then. But, uh, they saw fit that they should make a role. And we know where they went. They went up on uh, uh, what is now the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, we don't know exactly where that was, but uh, uh, they sent runners from from Saltville uh, all through Tennessee and also into West Virginia. And uh, we had people, uh, this list this list that's in here has uh, the people's names. And, and uh, uh, this guy was born in 1819. And uh, I don't want to read all these, these names. No, but, no, no. but anyway, there's, there's several. And say again, you consider this document sacred. The what? You consider this document very you're very, and my grandfather didn't didn't want uh, this to ever be uh, made public. Uh, I mean, the book would be made public, but as far as the names who were at this meeting, these these people, uh, that's how we find our our old tribal members or our new tribal members that they were related to these people that's in here. When did you first see this document? How old were you? And where, when and where did you see this? I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I, I was a, a man. Yes, uh, my my grandfather died, and uh, the house that this was this was in. I'd seen this uh, several times when I was younger. This was hidden in a, a closet, and uh, this is. I'm trying so to you were young when you first saw this? Well. Not real. Oh, and, oh when I, yeah, when I first saw it, uh, we weren't allowed to even touch this thing. So, so uh, and then the house. Your grandfather died, and the house was was empty. Well, well, my grandfather actually was still still alive, 
but uh, his, he lived to be 95, years, I think he's 95 years old, so a lot of years have passed. So I had already been in the Marine Corps when, uh, uh, at the time when I got out of the Marines, came back, I wanted to go up to what we call our old home place, and I uh, went, went there, and somebody had gone into the house and uh, all the furniture was still there and stuff like that, but uh, there was stuff thrown everywhere. Now this was upstairs in a, a closet that didn't have any light in it. it just a, when you go up the stairs, uh, over the stairs was this kind of closet-like thing. This happened to be laying in the floor, but it was laying in the floor downstairs, so they had picked it up mm -hmm. and uh, had taken it uh, down there. and. Whoever did this, uh, this was no use to them. They didn't realize what this was. And if uh, they had taken it out of their hotel, we may not have ever had this thing. But anyway, uh, I picked it up and picked up a few other things. And uh, But when I was little, um, uh, my granddaddy, he, he was a W.A. Vest, William Arthur Vest. And how he got the name Arthur, uh, when he was born, uh, the vice president, I can't remember his first name now, but his last name was, was Arthur. Ah. Uh, so he was named after, that was the first, uh, he was, that guy was vice chief, uh, vice, vice president, but that was the only Indian person that's ever been in, in that. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's I, what, I think it was Chester, I suppose. Chester, I mean. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and, and today, what, what do you consider the significance today of that role it's it's an awesome thing it's it's you know it speaks out for for our tribe and uh, it, this, this thing has kind of worn down uh, over the years and there used to be some beadwork on the front and they're gone and these are this ties to hold the uh, the pages together now I, I know that you've been reluctant to publish that. Mm -hmm. So would you talk about the reason for your reluctance to publish the role? I think uh, you've allowed me to publish just a little piece of it, but to, to publish the full role, explain about that, yeah. talk about that. Yeah. I can remember uh, people, the older people, saying that uh, this should never, never actually be published because everybody at that time wanted to be Indian. And they could go through here and find a the name Jones or something like this. Oh, I'm a Jones. I'm uh, I belong to this tribe. So and anyway, so we don't publish this because of the people's names in here. Maybe somebody could come by and say, Oh, I'm uh, my name is Floyd Vest or whatever it was, you know. And uh, it'd be kind of hard for us to disprove prove that if they they've got all this information. Good. Well, Mickey, you want to go on to, the, to a, a new topic? Okay, yes, sure. So next I want to um, go ahead and move to 20th century. So I want to ask a question about the Racial Integrity Act and, um, during the Plecker area. So uh, I've seen your birth certificate before, mm -hmm. and your birth certificate indicates as colored and not Indian. So could you tell us about the story when your mother had to travel to West Virginia to get your birth certificate listed as not colored? Well, actually, uh, that, that's a whole lot of truth in that, but there's mm -hmm. also, we, uh, uh, we went to Charleston, West Virginia, called William Plecker at the time was the first... Uh, Beckley. Huh? Beckley. Be Beckley, West Virginia. Yeah. Yes. And well, one of the reasons we went to Beckley, West Virginia, my granddad had two older brothers who had uh, moved to Beckley and they uh, became very wealthy. They owned some coal mines uh, up, up there. They knew this, uh, the, the law that Plecker had established. As a matter of fact, you could be in prison if you were a midwife or a nurse or something like that that filled out a birth certificate. Uh, if you were had Indian blood in you, they would put down that you were black, or actually, and which was nothing wrong with, with that, but we wanted our own, and we wanted to be who we, who we were. So anyway, my... So did you get two birth certificates? No, it's got, got one. That's the one that's in, in Beckley. Okay. Yeah. But what but, was the one that Mika said? That was a, a certificate of health. 
That's not what, what they call ah, so you didn't see. So let's let's correct the record know. now. What Mika saw was not your birth certificate. Well, she may have seen my birth certificate too. I mean, I don't know, but but. Uh, well, yeah. let Mika say, what did you see? It was one. It was some kind of. I thought it was a birth certificate that you showed me that um, under your status it was in racial status it was indicated as colored. Was yeah. that your? You said it was your health certificate. Well, the health certificate was half, half, like half of the page. Yes. Whereas mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. birth certificate was the, the whole thing. Okay. So I could. Which did you see me? I can't remember what I showed her. On I that. remember one certificate saying yeah. color, yeah. but I'm you not, say your birth certificate yeah. is your birth certificate is, from West Virginia. Yeah. That is, um, this racial status is indicated as. Indian. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is kind of a unique thing that happened. That Walter uh, Plecker in Richmond, Virginia, um, stepped out in front of a, a car in Richmond, and he's not around anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody ran over and killed him. And, and of course, a lot of people used to like. Actually, it was a city bus mm -hmm. that did it. And a lot of people used to say. Well, those Indians finally got their revenge on Plecker, but I don't think it was an Indian person that, that was driving a city bus or something. But anyway, I mean, he died instantly. Yes. And so I think that a little bit after that, they done away with all that, all those, if you're, if you're born in Virginia, if you're Indian, you're black. Which, uh, I mean, back then, those, we, we didn't have all that stigmatism with being a black person or anything like that like we do today. So what about, um, tell us about how your mother traveled to, you said Bickley, Bickley, Bickley. West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Do you know how she traveled to? Well, I wasn't born. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you went with well. <laughs> I, I felt the bumps in the road. You know. <laughs> uh, I was born uh, April 22nd, 1941. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was after, right after, the, I guess, the war mm -hmm. was over. My dad was uh, in, in the military. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we... Uh, my granddad's two brothers uh, owned those coal mines at that particular time up in there, and they, they had contacts with the, the news. They knew what was going on, but they knew a doctor up there that uh, that would put you down as as white. Not they, they wouldn't they wouldn't put you down as Indian, but it was better. Okay. We thought at the time it was better than being black in Virginia. So that means uh, in at West Virginia. Um, there was no racial categoriz categorization as Indians. That's right. Okay, so it was also in West Virginia, it was only uh, black or white. Black, black or white. Mm -hmm. right. So your birth certificate um, this is indicated as white, white. and not mm -hmm. Indian. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And I also have a follow up question. Um, did other members of your family travel outside Virginia to be racially categorized as yes. Indians? Yes. Okay, do you know who? Yes. Gene mm -hmm. uh, Brown. For example, mm -hmm. uh, one of my cousin Pat, mm -hmm. Pat Brown. Uh, I How many know. would you guess? How many total people went from Floyd County to West Virginia to be born? Well, first, first of all, my granddad's two brothers, because of this racial integrity thing, they they moved. I mean, they didn't have uh, the the problem. I mean, to go up there to mm -hmm. to be born. I mean, they were they were older men at that particular time, and uh, they owned. Uh, Couple of coal mines in Beckley. I don't know the name of the mines or anything like that. I mean, that was way before. I, but uh, it was quite, uh, quite a, a, a ride. We had an old pickup truck thing that had a stake body on the back of it, and we put some of our furniture and stuff. And my dad had just just gotten out of, the, out of the army, just maybe a couple months before that, or three months, or whatever it was. And uh, I guess. Uh, that we, of course I wasn't, I don't remember any of that stuff, it was too little, but we went to Beckley and um, there was a guy, I, these records, uh, I, I, I just have been told to me, I don't know if it existed, but uh, they, uh, they put on one, one certificate thing that my name is Lee Bond, Paul Vest. Now that was, uh, 
who Lee Vaughn is, I have no idea. Paul Vest is my daddy. <laughs> but anyway, all that all that stuff is out, and I've got I've got that certificate uh, somewhere. I, I haven't seen it for a long time, but anyway. So when we went up there, my dad had, had planned on he had just gotten out of the army, and uh, he had planned because uh, his two uncles, uh, Sid and Irv, I think yeah, Sid or Irv and Sid uh, Vest. Anyway, they were they were pretty well established, and so. They told my dad, said, you know, come up here and have your baby born, and we'll give you a job in, in the coal mines. Well, let me just, I don't think I've ever told, this may not be that important, but my dad and his grand, his granddaddy, or his daddy, rather, my granddaddy, came up there, too, to, to work in the coal mines. And one of the areas that my dad was in, and he was working with a, a black guy, well, the, the roof collapsed and hit my dad in the back of the neck and down and, and just squashed him down. He couldn't get up. And that black guy died under that big cave in. Well, my granddaddy was in another another tunnel or whatever it was. And he somebody told him, he said, uh, my granddad's name was William, but we called him, they called him Bill. He said, Bill said, your son's over here under, under a, a cave in and we can't get him out. So my granddaddy took off and he picked up a railroad tie. I don't, they told me how much that thing weighed. I can't remember. It was a big, long railroad tie. And he got a lump of coal and rolled up to that, uh, I'm going to use that thing, but he put a, a lump of coal there and then got a, a railroad thing and put under this thing and used this as a lever and a fulcrum thing and pried that, that thing up so these people could get my dad out. And uh, the only damage it really did to my dad was um, it, it crushed his hips and uh, I can't, I don't know the medical term, but uh, anyway, the, uh, they rushed my dad to a hospital there somewhere in Beckley. And my granddad uh, was a very religious man, and he stayed in there and prayed constantly for my dad. And uh, anyway, uh, my granddad wouldn't let my dad just stay in bed. He said, get out on this bed over here and walk around and get back in the bed over here. Well, I was hurting my dad. But, he did that for several times, and then a doctor came in and told my granddad, he says, come here a minute, I'll take you outside in the hallway, i got some news for you. He said, I'm sorry, he said, we've done all we can do for your, your son, he said he'll never be able to walk again. My granddad said, well, he's been walking for about two weeks. Again, I mean, <laughs> anyway, so uh, my dad healed up, and, and we ended up moving back down to Floyd County after Plecker was gone. Right. And, and how we, give me a number. People who went to Beckley because of now this, now I understand that there's this nice connection with the brothers who were prosperous in the coal mining business. Mm -hmm. How many babies were born in Beckley to Virginia Indians so that they could get white on their birth certificate? Right. Have Just at a guess. Probably 10 or 12. That's good. That's good. Okay. Thank you. I'm yeah. just guessing. Now they were my cousins. Mika, we got, we've got most of that first yes, section, um, right? I also want to ask you about, so you said you, on your birth certificate, you, your race is um, listed as white and not mm -hmm. Indian. So how do you feel about that? Well, being I'm, as I'm kind of disappointed well? in it because mm -hmm. it's, the only record it shows me is uh, mm -hmm. as native mm -hmm. is uh, in the Marines. The Marine Corps got me down mm -hmm. as Native American. Oh, the Marine Corps put you down there. Well, I got that, that information somewhere with me. No, no, no. Oh, well, I mean, just, just tell us about it. Yeah, just a Native American. Yeah. Except, uh, when, when I uh, went into the Marines, just doing the Vietnam thing. What year was? What year did you go into the Marines? Uh, I knew he was going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of that was just a blur. But anyway, so um, I think it was 1960. Okay. And this was right out of out of high school. And I went in. So you've been, been 19? When, how old were you when you went in the Marines? 18. Ages, so that's about right, yeah. 1960, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and, and they allowed you to, to enter as a, as a Native American? They, they didn't ask me that. They just, they just put it down on, on this certificate thing, Native ah, American. But you must have told them that. Well, there was a. Um, I don't know if I did or didn't. I mean, I really don't know. Okay. But anyway, there was a. 
and the group that I was in was all American Indians. Ah, okay. We, we had a, we were. A, Where was this? Where were you when? At that particular time, that was at Paris Island, Paris Island, South Coast. And how many other American Indian Marines were there? All together, all over. I don't know. But with your group, probably five or six. Okay. Yeah. And they sent us to Paris Island. Had we had known that that uh, the Spanish had been there, and they they took over that island, and there's probably artifact. When I was marching, I had we had to look straight ahead. I've been looking for arrowheads. <laughs> <and I'd> <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just add a uh, a footnote to that, and that is by by strange chance when one part of made his 1567 expedition into this region, into here, into, into uh, the Carolinas. He left from what is today Paris Island. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that at that time. I was going to think I got a thing from her. Well, the group I was with and the Marines, we had a lot of Native people. And we were uh, grouped together because they thought that we could sneak up on people. And they proved it one time with me. They, I went, I went to a tent, a VC tent. They had uh, electricity there. Somewhere. VC. Bitcoin. Yes. But anyway, they, uh, there was a, I don't know, about four or five men in this tent, and I crawled into the back of the tent and stole their machine gun, and took it out and brought it back. And this guy that had bet that made twenty dollars off me. And I could have been killed. <laughs> <laughs> did you, Did you get any medals when you were a marine? Um, yeah, but you know what? I, uh, I had a problem with, with that. Remember, I was talking about the. Uh, that looks like Floyd County or the waterfall. It's in Floyd County. Yeah. I've been fishing there many, many times. But yeah. I, uh, anyway, so what was the question you asked me? Uh, did you medals? Oh, well, I, I've got a, a lot of uh, uh, medals, which uh, I didn't didn't think it was, what they were giving us was right because we had our own source of medals, uh, like a wound stick that we gave, and they were giving out. Now I was never wounded like like that, but I did have uh, uh, when I was at Camp uh, Camp Lejeune, that's in North Carolina. Uh, this was uh, after Paris Island. They uh, gave me a meritorious promotion and put me in this warehouse, and all I had to do was sit there. And everybody else was working. Well, this uh, this guy may have been black, or he may have been an Indian. I don't know. But it was a he came in and had a clipboard. And he says, "I want you to come out here." And he said, "I've got the, these barrels on this truck, and they've got numbers on them." And I want you to, when I take the barrels off, they said, we'll find the number and you check that off. And uh, so the very first time he tried to unload a thing, he missed. But anyway, he was looking down at my clipboard. Oh, he was looking down at my clipboard and he took his eye off of the barrel and he, the forklift blade, which is about that big, seemed like, he punctured that barrel. And it was up about, the, the truck bed was up about, from the floor about this high. All that, not all that liquid, the whole bunch of that liquid hit me head on face. And that was a pesticide? It was Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Yeah, so you got swamped with Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. I swallowed it. Um, it went all over me. I had blisters all over me for, for a long time. Well, anyway, I got so sick, uh, and I just don't remember a lot of things. But I, I walked back to the barracks. I had my uniform on and I had the combat boots on. And uh, my left boot had been filled with all that chemical stuff. Well, I didn't know what it was. At the, I mean, you know, I'd been, been in the Marines for just a short while. And I uh, went back to the barracks and, and lay down on, on the bed, had all my clothes on. Well, the next thing I remember is I woke up in a a hospital somewhere on the base. There's a big red, well, almost like this light here, just a big red light above me. And I was in so much pain, and the doctor, for some reason, went to my left foot. That was the side that most of the, everything got on. And he started unlacing my boot. Oh, it felt so good, because it was my, my 
foot was just throbbing. And uh, when he started taking that off, I, I raised up to see what was going on. And uh, he just, he called me son. He said, son, said, you'll be all right here, son. Just taking your, your boots off. And uh, it felt so good. Well, when he, I kept looking down, but when he took my sock off, he pulled all the skin from my ankle. All that skin came off of my foot. That stuff had already started eating, eating me up. And uh, I don't remember a thing after that. Oh, well, in the meantime, I don't know if this is, uh, my mom, my mom died. I don't know if you want to hear what happened there or not, but let me go on with that. Yeah, go on. Uh, um, anyway, at that particular time, after I had healed a little bit, they sent me to, uh, to Camp Elmore. That's in Norfolk, Virginia. It's in the Fleet Marine Force. Well, Camp Elmore has changed its name now. Elmore was a, a private that was in World War II, and he held off a bunch of Germans. and was, was and, a hero. Right. And so they named this base Camp Elmore. And it's, they've got a different name to it now. Because I've been looking on the computer trying to find Camp Elmore and couldn't find it. And finally found out that they changed the name to some other hero. But anyway, all that skin came off my, my foot. And I, I started... Uh, over the years, all these sores started coming up on my, my leg and, and my body, and that chemical was all inside me. That might have been what caused my cancer, I don't know. But, uh, they, I'm cancer free now, according to my doctor. But anyway, uh, when, when I uh, got that, when I woke up and saw that doctor, I don't remember anything else. Well, it was close to Christmas time. I got from, from there to Body Talk County, Virginia, Troutville, and uh, I don't remember how I got, got home. I have no idea. I didn't have a car. Because at that point, you, your family moved from Floyd County to Body Talk County. Yeah, my, my dad had worked for, was working for the government. Right. Yeah. I think, Mika, we want to, we want to go back now yes. to, to the bottom of the page. Yes. About, uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay if I ask more about questions about the racial integrity yet? Sure. Yes. I do want to go back a little bit and um, ask you um, about the Racial Integrity Act and about Walter Plecker. So, um, so growing up as a child in Floyd County, you knew about Walter Plecker, correct? No. Oh, no? I okay. didn't. I mean, not your parents. Everybody else did. Okay. I was just a, so um, you said um, your parents knew and other members of your family knew about Plecker. Mm -hmm. See, the, my granddad's mm -hmm. two brothers was in Beckley mm -hmm. and they they knew about the, the law mm -hmm. in Virginia mm -hmm. and they said that we've got a doctor friend up here. I guess he had the coal miners that got mm -hmm. hurt. But he, he knew this one doctor that mm -hmm. that would put us down as, as, as white. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's so why we went. When did you... When did you like, hear about Walter Plecker? How yeah. did you know about him? And, and did you, and to add to that, when you were growing up in, in Floyd County, did you experience discrimination as an Indian in the light of that? Well, Talk I, about I, did, that. I did know about it in Floyd County, but no, there were so many people in our area that had native blood that uh, no, we weren't. I, I can remember one time, uh, this is all that, that I'm thinking, I'm not sure, but there was a, my granddad was out, out in a field, well, there's a lot of fields up there where we lived, I mean, we, we owned about 5,000 acres of land, or my granddad did, and that was given to us, we think, by King George of England, I don't, I don't know, I, I've never had Well, that, that would have been the, the land title, the, the king wouldn't have given it to you, but it mm -hmm. might have been that his name is on the original land title. Okay, well, that was probably been Floyd County something. I had a paper um, on our family from uh, the registrar in Floyd County, and it shows my grandmother. Her name was Nettie, N-E-T-T-I-E, -E, and we call her Whirlwind. I mean, she's always like a whirlwind. Just she's doing. She couldn't sit still. She just worked, work, work, work. What was her maiden name? It was Gearhart. Say it again louder. Gearhart. Gearhart. Okay. Gearhart. So she was your father's mother. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, now, uh, she also had Indian blood in her, and her, her brother was a very well-known uh, preacher in Buena Vista, Virginia. Buena Vista. Tom, Tom okay. Gearhart. And, uh, the, the record, I've tried to find the record, the record of 
Indians in Floyd County is very, very thin. Yeah. There's almost nothing on the historical record. Right. And, but you said, and I want to hear, how many Indians would you guess were in Floyd County when you were a child, say in 1950? Well, when I went to start school in Floyd County, I went into the third grade. Okay. And uh, we had stayed in West Virginia all those times when my dad was working uh, for his uncles. When we moved back to, uh, to uh, Floyd County, uh, one of the uncles in, in, that owned that coal mine had a house, a, a house that was built at, right close to my, my granddad's house. So uh, he told us we could have that house, or I don't know if we had it, but we could use it or bought it or something. Right. And we moved back, back there. And, uh, uh, and you, when you got back to Floyd, you realized there was a significant Indian community. Right. Well, it, it, not particularly at our farm thing. No, 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 but, but in the but county. school, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. when you went to school, how many, how many fellow American Indians? There was more of us than, as we always say, there was more of us than them. So, really? Yeah. So this would be about 1950 in, in Virginia, in Floyd County? I said I was born in 41. And I said, uh, went third, yeah, grade. third grade. So you were about 1950. Yeah. And you used to say, the, what was it you used to say about American Indians in Floyd County when you went to school? There's well, more of there more, oh, more of us than them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, didn't mean that in a in a literal sense, but I mean, it wasn't a, like a, a war cry or thing like that. It was right. just like, and, and and did you did you have did you play with you with your fellow Indians? Or oh, maybe? sure. Yeah, we had back then. You could even carry a gun or a knife in your pocket or something like that. And we go out. They call it recess. We go out of recess and shoot a squirrel, and then put it put it on the ice. If they had ice. They didn't have running water. Just had ice. Put the squirrel on the ice and kept it so the school bell ran. And we walk home carrying our squirrel, and that's what we had for supper. <laughs> Amazing. And how did you kill it? Say it again. How did you kill the squirrel? Say it again. How did we do it? How did you kill the squirrel? Well, uh, gravel shoot it, then stomp it. I mean, you shoot it to gravel and knock it down, and just. I mean, but, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that today. Uh, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And I had a, uh, my grandmother gave me a over and under four ten. So I had a had a shotgun shell on the bottom and a twenty two rifle on the top. And I'd carry that thing to school. And how, and, and how old were you when you had this equipment? I was in third grade. That's, that's, I find that hard to believe, but that's, that's why we're here. Well, that's those kinds of questions, yeah. Well, that's so describe had. it again, that's amazing. You, you went to school, 10 years old, mm -hmm. with a double gun. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't take it to school, I, I laid it in the woods, so. So the school didn't know you had it? Uh, well, if they did, they didn't care. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, we all hunted up there. You know, I don't hunt now today. I don't do that. Right. I mean, but we had to do it to eat. And so that was part of the culture. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I have a, another tongue-in-cheek question. Okay. When you when you were with your schoolmates, uh, you know, in the third and fourth grade, did you used to play cowboys and Indians? And which side were you on? No, we, no we, we played Uchi and Cherokee. <laughs> we were the Uchi and they were the Cherokee. <laughs> no, you're making that up for now, or was that no, right? No, it was just... Okay. No, we, it, was a, it was a good... We didn't have running water, we didn't have cups. We had to take a sheet of notebook paper like that and fold it into a cup. And you, they, you'd stand at the water bucket and dip the water in, and you had to drink your water real fast because eventually it'd start dripping <laughs> out. But, but my my cousin Keith Light, L I G H T, that was my granddaddy's sister's grandson. Yes. Anyway, uh, he had one of these uh, aluminum cups that folds up. It's about that thick, and then you just oh, do that. He had a, a mechanical thing. We all envied him because we'd never seen anything like that before. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and no one had cars. We all rode horseback. I mean, is this, uh, is this, um, well, I say no one had cars. I mean, none of, none of us had cars. None of the Indian people in Floyd County. Yeah, we had a school bus. Stanley Lawrence was, uh, he had a, a, a store, and he drove the school bus. But we had, to, we had to get on one bus 
and drive back to his store. He let us off. We get on another bus to go to the other school. Well, my my granddad's brother, Noah, Noah Bass, N O N O A H, I guess, because he and my granddad were, were Indian. But Noah, because of that, all that bunch of stuff about the, the black stuff and you know, all this, stuff, he uh, he never would come around. Now he was a builder. He he built this. Oh, gosh. see, that's the store that I just want to show you something on where it is now. But uh, he uh, he was a builder. He built this particular store. He built this, uh, the schoolhouse that I first went to school in the third grade. And he built it. He built the church there. But he always went as white. He wanted to do, do so, that. So he was an Indian, but, uh, but he acted and behaved socially as though he cause was. Because he thought the people wouldn't use him if he was Indian. So that was clearly discrimination. And was, did, when was the first time, if ever, in Floyd County, when did you feel discrimination? Never. Not in Floyd County? Not in Floyd County. Or in Body Talk County either. Or not in Body Talk, that's interesting. Matter of fact, when I uh, went to Body Talk, uh, my dad got a, a new promotion and he worked for the government uh, in Roanoke, and we moved to Troutville. And uh, one of my best friends, his name was Ralph Hicks, and uh, he was Monacan Indian. And he and I used to get together and talk, and we'd go up to this big cliff where the buzzards would nest, and they'd spit up on you. And we'd get, try to get their feathers that they had lost to, to make war bonnets or whatever we needed. And then he ended up moving to, uh, to Arizona. He's in the insurance business. I guess he's still alive. Okay. And uh, he and I played football together. I was a first string quarterback, halfback, and he was my replacement if I came out of the game. As I recall, the Bonita thought you were a pretty good football player. You had a, uh, a good career. And, mm -hmm. and there was one year where you went to... Uh... Christiansburg. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Christiansburg. They, they recruited, which was illegal at, in Virginia at that time. Yes. Uh, they got me and a guy named Mike Basham. Mike was the biggest of this guy here. Uh, excuse me for pointing at you. <laughs> he wasn't a fisher, he was a basham. <laughs> and he did on the field, he bashed them. <laughs> but anyway, coach. You uh, both got recruited by Christiansburg. Do what? You, you both, both of you were recruited by Christiansburg? Yes. Now he, 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 Mike Basham lived in Shawsville. Ah, okay. At Shawsville, and then Coach Earp, uh, uh, I was in a paper a whole lot as a football player, and uh, he got in touch with my uncle, Uncle Eddie, who lived in Christiansburg at that time. Uh, Coach Earp asked my uncle, he said, what would it take to get Lee up here? And Eddie said, just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it's fair to say you are a highly talented and highly recruited football player in high school. That's pretty good. I played football in the Marines also. In the Marines too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we were undefeated. Well, that's interesting. I, I, in general, did you, not you personally now, that's good to know that, but in general, were Indians discriminated against in Floyd County in the period of your youth? I never, never saw any of that. There's a lot of Indian people in Floyd County. And they didn't suffer significant discrimination. That's interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of them were, were put down as black. Yeah, I mean, obviously the state was discriminating, but locally you you were pretty much integrated into the Floyd County community. Yeah. Is that correct? Right. Now, you know where Shawsville is? Yes. Okay, that little road that comes from Shawsville back up my... Back up to where? Back up to our, our farm in our okay. area. Okay. When I say our farm, Floyd I mean, we, all, we had yeah. five, I think about 5,000 acres okay. of land. Uh, anyway, uh, on that road from Shawsville to, to your my, land, my granddaddy's daddy built that road. The uh, government uh, gave him two mules and a wagon and all the dynamite he needed. And he built that road from Shawsville all the way up through Floyd County. Interesting. Uh, by our farm. Well, anyway, he. Uh, and, and your farm was near, near Willis? Did what now? Your farm was near Willis, is that correct? Your 5,000 acres? Not really Willis. No, say where it was. With, um, I don't, we just call it Floyd County, but uh, Do you remember which direction was it from the courthouse? Oh, the courthouse in, in Floyd? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, let's see, let's see, the courthouse being 
where it is. Do you know where Czech High School is, or Czech School? Czech. I know where Czech is. I don't know the school, okay. but I know well, where Czech is. Well, if you come from Czech, we were more toward the east. Okay. The school being where it is. And we had to ride sometimes uh, three buses to get to school. And sometimes we had to walk. And, and is it correct, you, you hope you'd like to go back to Floyd sometime today? and reestablish some of those? Oh gosh, yeah. I, uh, talk, fact, about, talk about that. Well, uh, one of our tribal women, uh, she was a clan mother also, and uh, a place where my grandmother was born is called, most of our little village things were called by towns, like her, her, her place was called Dog Town. Dog? Dog, 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 roof, roof, you know, dog, dog Town. town. Okay. <laughs> 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 She thought I sound like a dog. <laughs> anyway, uh, she and my granddad met. Well, there was a big waterfall there, and uh, they used to stop that stream uh, about the first, uh, the last week of March, and put trout in it, and we could fish. But a lot of people got killed there because it's dangerous. It's just, I mean, they fell. It's like those. Waterfall you see there, people yeah. would Chief, slip on Chief Lee is uh, pointing there's a, on the wall uh, in the conference room, there's a, a fine picture of a, uh, of a waterfall. Mm -hmm. Chief Lee is pointing at the waterfall. Yeah. We just call it the waterfall, but there's only waterfall on that creek. <laughs> yeah, it was the only waterfall in your neighborhood. So yeah. Yeah. Now, all the water in Floyd County Can't is there and goes out. There's no water comes into Floyd County. There's right. no, no streams that come into Floyd County at all. It all goes out. Again, I'm going to add a footnote to that. Oh. The, the, the footnote to that is that, that Floyd County is on, on the eastern continental divide, and the, the water that, uh, that comes in, uh, there's no, no, no place for water to come into Floyd County because it's all downhill out of Floyd County, right. so it all flows out. Yeah. It, it, yeah, all the water in Floyd County goes out of the county. Yeah. Nothing comes in unless it rains. I mean, but, but there's no other creeks, and we'd fish. The first time I ever saw one of these, uh, uh, we call it a, a, a devil fish. It's a big lizard about that long, mean looking. They don't bite you, but they're just big. They, they, look, look, they look mean. <laughs> yeah. and I, there's another there's a scientific name for it. I can't re recall that now, but I mean, the first one I ever seen, I was had my jeans on and rolled the jeans up past my knees and I'm standing in the water and look down there and he's thinking, coming to me. I said, oh my gosh, he's going to eat me up. <laughs> <laughs> They're docile, very, I mean, they, they don't pay any attention to yeah. you. But anyway, I got out of the water and just watched him. <laughs> that was, yeah. And how old would you have been? Oh, at that time I was probably in eighth grade, okay. something like that. And, and that was in April. We always had the fishing season open the first of April. But some of those people, uh, when they would, the game commission would come through and, and stock the creeks, uh, they would go at night and catch a lot of those fish, and we didn't have any, sometimes much luck. So did you uh, catch those fish and you ate them? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. And you also mentioned that you... We lived off the land, uh, and we raised yeah. a farm. I mean, I had, we had acres and acres of corn and beans and squash and stuff. So you grew, um, like, farm and ate, like... From the vegetable the, in from the farm, and you also say so you catch like you caught fish and you like took a squirrel. So how did you cook those squirrels and uh -huh. fish? We'd shoot them. With what? We'd shoot them. The squirrel would shoot them. <laughs> and how did you cook them? Oh, cook them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we fry them. Well, the way you skin a squirrel is uh, to say this is this, the whole squirrel back. Right here's his tail, and his anus is right here. You you just cut a, a notch right here. You step on, on the, the tail and you grab the rest of the legs like this and you pull and all the skin comes off. And you got to be careful about the hair getting on the meat. It's hard to get off, especially with rabbits. And we had to do that to eat. And we would say a prayer, a prayer for those little animals. And it was, and I wouldn't kill one of those things today for nothing. But back then, that was just... And, and like the Indian... Wanted, I'm sorry, finish. I was going to say, it's just like you going to Walmart or something like that and buy a loaf of bread or something. I mean, just don't think anything about it. Uh, but back then, I mean, it wasn't a sport for us. It was survival. And the Indian way was to was to pray for the animal you would kill? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, if we had time, you'd, you'd just, just speak to the Creator, just speak to 
you know, like while you're going from the house to the woods or something like that, you just say, you know, if it's, if it's in favor today, let us uh, get something to feed our family. And uh, we had a lot. Well, at that time, I, I believe this is, this is right. Uh, the law in Floyd County, or maybe been in Virginia at the time, uh, you can only kill 50 squirrels a year. I mean, mm -hmm. And we, we honored that. I never did get up to 50 squirrels. I think the most squirrels I ever killed was in one year was 27. But my granddad always get up to 50 and then that was, that was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, he, he, he had always, we could, we could not fish or hunt or do anything like that on a Sunday. Why was that? Huh? Why, why is the reason? Well, Sunday was supposed to be sacred. That was the day that the, you know. But that was that was White Virginia. That was what? It was White Virginia that stopped the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. What other animals did you um, hunt for food? Groundhogs. Groundhogs. You had to cut the current book called a kernel under their arm, arm front arms. Mm -hmm. You had to cut that out mm -hmm. because it made the meat taste bad. Mm -hmm. And you and your um, brothers and sisters also helped to cook for the food. Um, well, my brother, I, I, everything we fixed, he ate, but he never did help do anything <laughs> else. <laughs> and my sisters. Uh, Were there big enough fish to eat in Floyd County? Yeah, we, we had horny heads. You know what a horny head is? No, tell they us about horny heads. They have horns on their head, the male does, and the chubs are the females. I don't get about that long. That's, that's as long as a male. And the, the male had those horns on his head, and he takes his head and rolls his gravels in the, the stream, rolls his gravels up, and then she lays her eggs in there, and he comes by and fertilizes mm -hmm. those and all that. All that fer you know, when he fertilizes, it goes down in the rocks on those, those eggs, and it's not likely to, to wash away. But they go into a, like a shallow uh, place of water. You know, just not in a, in a swift water, they couldn't do that. but. But they didn't stop. Uh, oh, and when my grandmother was born at that big waterfall it was in Dogtown, um, they've got, uh, now you, there's, we call them mad toms. There's a catfish about that long, maybe six inches long. And if you caught one of those things, you threw it back because it's all head or all tail. You didn't have anything in the middle. <laughs> and there's nothing to eat. <laughs> and there, there was as white as a sheet of paper. And, and why did Indian people go, me going back on, on page two of the script, when, why did Indian people go to uh, Floyd County? Why did they go? Yeah, why, why, why did they go? Because it was Mona, so isolated. the no, Mona, Monica people were actually further to the east. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and they went there because it was isolated? It was isolated, and at that particular time, the timber business was, was big. Yes. And uh, also there's a lot of gold and silver in Floyd County. I mean, I've got a bunch of gold and silver at the house. Okay. And I've, of course, I'm a silversmith, and you know, I went to school to be a silversmith. Yeah, we're going to come back and talk a lot about that later on. Okay. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and that, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, so you mentioned that, um, so you were born in West Virginia, and then when you were about in third grade, you moved back to Floyd County. We moved back. Okay. Uh, was it, mm -hmm. you know, I guess the third grade was still going at that time, okay. and both back, uh, mm -hmm. we lived in Crow, Crow, West Virginia. Crow, West Virginia. Uh, there's, there's a lot of history about mm -hmm. that. As a matter of fact, the, they, uh, the Park Service has this area up there, and they, well, you was involved in this thing. That, that guy that you knew up in West Virginia, you know, he sent me that, that belt, that woven belt. I've forgotten this, I think. Okay, I didn't bring that belt with me. There's a woven belt that uh, she must have, uh, they must have made it for a big person because I could wrap it around me about three times. Then you huh. tighten a knot on the, if you're, if you're married, you tie the knot on the left side. And if you're not married, you tie the knot okay. on the right side. Uh -huh. It's kind of like wearing a wedding. But I'm, I'm married, but uh, I have arthritis in my fingers, and my fingers would swell, and I'd have trouble getting my ring off. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they, they had found a lot of beads and stuff like that up, up there uh, in, uh, I'm trying to think what county this was, Raleigh County. Raleigh, Raleigh County. County. 
and we'd go over to the park and you'd see the trains way down. They look like little matchbox cars going down the track. And uh, anyway, they they called or sent me a letter, and they had found some artifacts in there and wanted to know if uh, those were our artifacts. Ah, okay. You 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 the one set this thing up. I'm I'm sorry, I have bad memory, so I <laughs> well, it's the the guy. Uh, We'll, anyway. we'll, we'll talk about it during the break. And okay. Maybe we'll, be, maybe okay. Come back we'll, we'll be able, we'll be able to say, uh, okay, to so say more about it. Go so ahead, you moved to Floyd County uh, when you were I didn't in, hear the first part. So, so you moved to Floyd County when you were in grade school, right? Third grade. Um, about, third grade. About eight, eight years old. So before you um, decided to leave Virginia, were there any parts of, um, like, before you moved to Kingsport, Tennessee, were there any parts in Virginia that you moved? Yes. Oh, well, we don't know what they are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when we first moved mm -hmm. uh, back from West Virginia to Floyd County, mm -hmm. we went County. to mm -hmm. uh, to our farm, mm -hmm. to my granddad's farm, and uh, we stayed there for a long time. And then, uh, uh, by that time, I got in. I was in high school, mm -hmm. getting ready to go to high school, and I wanted to play football. Mm -hmm. And uh, Floyd County itself had a football team, mm -hmm. but uh, it wasn't as good as. And I heard of this team called, called the Warriors. Mm -hmm. I thought, hey, that's for me. So it was in Troutville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. sure. So and then you moved to Charlottesville, Virginia. Troutville, Virginia. Okay. Well, my, my dad worked for the, well, he, was, uh, he was a veteran, Army mm -hmm. veteran. And uh, at that particular time, the, when the war was over, the, vet, the, the VA would help veterans you know, get a job or housing or something like that. And uh, they, they even did that to, to me. And uh, like uh, we get all free medical medical stuff, and uh, there's a there's a law by the federal government now. If you if you have a drop of Indian blood in you, uh, the law says that you get all your all your health taken care of. It's like with with me, you know, the, the problems I had to the VA took care of all, the VA, the Veteran Administration, took care of all of that. Well, there's an Indian Health Service. Right, IHS, yeah. Indian Health Service. Yeah, I, but I, in, in my visit to Oklahoma, I met quite a number of people who were involved as either using the services of the Indian Health Service, yeah. or actually I met people who were working in, working in the Indian Health Service. Yeah. You sent me an email here a while back, wouldn't know if I'd ever been to Oklahoma, but yeah. not to the Uchi Reservation. But I've been in Oklahoma a lot of times. Ah, and what was it that took you to Oklahoma? I was going to California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just passing through. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got the movie business out there one time in California. And uh, didn't like the California, oh gosh. Didn't like California at all. Uh -huh. I mean, it was just too, too busy. I mean, gosh, you could, get in your, your room, go to sleep, and I don't care how far away it was, those cars, beep, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I mean, all these, I mean, just. And when, and when did you move to Kingsport? I say, when did we move, or when did I move to Kingsport? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. We've been married, well, our anniversary was, was just recently. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Which anniversary was it? 38. 38. So you're married to 38 years. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's no. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a good life. At, at and, and where were you married? In Kingsport? Were you married right. in Kingsport? We was married. Out, we had a house on the lake. We had uh, this uh, friend of her mom's knew this house was, was for sale. It was a big, beautiful house right on the water. Which lake? Do what? Which lake? Boone Lake. Boone Lake. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how far is that from Kingsport? Or is that it is Kings. Well, it's at Bluff City. Bluff City, so it's yeah, very close to Kingsport. Yeah. yeah. It's about a 15, 20 minute drive to Kingsport. Okay. But we lived there for. And when you married, when you married Cindy, what was your job at that point, and what did you what did you do for uh, for a profession uh, in the years of the early years you were married to Cindy? I don't know what I, was I working for the Truckee Company then? 
Huh? Antique. Well, I had antique shelves. I had an antique business. You had an antique business. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we traveled, did shows all over the country. What kind of shows? Antique shows. Antique I mean, shows? just oh. all kind of. And and did you sell your artifacts? You? No. No. Well, I did sell one tomahawk one time, but, but the reason I did that, this this woman found one in Richmond, Virginia, at an antique show. And she bought it and gave it to me, and I wasn't too fond of her, so I sold it. Yeah. And you, you one time talked about your grandfather and somebody who tried to sell him Indian artifacts. Oh, okay. Tell that story. There was a, in Floyd County, uh, on, I, I can't really make, make sure of this, but I think that the, um, uh, the game commission would, would uh, stocked the, the, the streams with trout. And uh, I believe it was the, the, the fishing season opened the 1st of April, I, I believe. I mean, somewhere along that line. Right. And we uh, went down to, to Ross Willis's store. Save it for later, because we're, okay. we're almost well, at the We went down to Ross Willis's store. Uh, that was uh, the store that Uncle Noah had uh, built. Right. And he wouldn't let anybody know he had Indian blood in it. I got a picture of all that, and I got the on document on the back of it. But anyway, uh, so this guy from uh, from Roanoke yes. came up at, to Ross Willis' store. Yes. And uh, he just walked up to my granddad, and he said, uh, I bet you I've got something you'd like to have. And granddad said, well, what's that? He said, I've got these pipes. And he went to his trunk's car and got them out. It was on a towel or, or a piece of cloth or something like that. My granddad looked at him and he said, well, where's your real ones? And he said, well, I did a good job on these, didn't I? Something like that. And my granddad says, not as far as I'm concerned. He threw them against the bank and broke every one of them. That's a good story to stop on. We're, we're going to take a break now okay. and uh, we'll continue in a while. Okay. Thank you, Chief Lee. Oh, you're welcome.